Welcome to April 1992. This is our Ultimate 90s web show. I am Draco from Game Rift, joined as always by an expert of 90s history. Wesley, how you doing? Uh, life is good and just got better. <laughs> popping tops. Um, I wonder if our friend Cass is popping tops somewhere as he is still I sailed sure away. I sure hope so. God, Lee, I sure hope on a uh, destination vacation, right? Doing it big. Well earned vacation for Cass, but we are looking forward to having him back next week. In the meantime, we, the two man booth continues with historical events in April 1992. You know, if it's about wrestling, I got to mention it the fifth largest crowd in the Toronto Sky Dome on April 1st. What is that? Wrestling? Uh, WrestleMania? Maybe? I don't know. But. If it's in Toronto, there's a good enough chance that, that was WrestleMania. That was WrestleMania. Fair enough. I've got, I'm not a big stadium guy. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I, I, yeah, I don't know much about the lore of stadiums. And I mean, obviously, there's the big dog Yankee Stadium and the Boston Garden and Staples Center for me, but the Great Western Forum, uh, right? Whatever. Madison Square there, Garden is a big that event for like concerts and events and stuff. MSG so. for sure, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, no doubt. But when it comes to you know Wrigley Field and all those, I think that's the one that the Cubs play at. You know what? I don't know these things, so I'm sure that there are people that that means a whole lot to and cheers to them and shout out to the city of Toronto. But okay, <laughs> there's a big there's a big crowd there. If we can confirm that's WrestleMania, maybe I'm a, I'm a little bit more interested. Right, we'll take a look into that um, on same day. The NFL decides to stay with 17-week schedule instead of expanded 18 games. This is interesting to me because they're still having this conversation every few years, it seems like. Yeah, because like, this didn't go they away. want money. <clears throat> they right. want the money. How do we get more money? We have more games? Well, cool. We add another, we add another week or two. I, yeah, I've decided... Actually, I think I decided all along that I was just against it. I think for the amount of teams we have and the length of the season feels as close to perfect as it's going to get. I think we should leave it alone. I don't have an opinion. More games doesn't hurt at all. The season feels like it. I can't really say that it feels like it ends early, but I'd rather like bad. Yeah, but I guess my counter to that was I would rather feel like it's ending sooner than I want it to because better to miss it than leave them wanting more right I get um I get a little fatigued with basketball and I get a lot fatigued with baseball yeah baseball is terrible basketball is a little it's a little bit too much and it's it's more a matter with basketball for me because I look I can I can watch the games and enjoy them. <clears throat> now I don't like go out of my excuse me guys I don't go out of my way to watch a game in the middle of November or even January for that matter. But there are times when there's a good game on and I'll I'll check it out and it's cool to keep an eye on team development. It's one of those things that's cool to passively watch. Uh, baseball just has it all wrong because you get past the point of like anticipating the playoffs coming together and a team really gelling and and getting it right to the point of damn we're at game number 110 and there's still <laughs> like 20 30 left to go right so i'm with i'm with you but bringing that back to football i wouldn't be opposed to more that's all i have to say about that i really wouldn't be opposed to more is it 17 games right now and we're dealing with 81 in basketball and I want to say like 140 in baseball, then yeah, I can deal with playing every team once. <laughs> I can even deal with that. Wow. That, what every... a, ooh, that's, that's 31 weeks um, of football. Yeah. I what's mean... that like out of a 52 week year? Yeah, no doubt. Okay. Maybe that's a bit much. These, but... these guys can't stay healthy, <laughs> healthy for 16 games as it is right now. I can only imagine. The, the dynamic would change drastically, wouldn't it? Would change. You can't run them to death. And 
it does more get, it would more of those pinch guys yeah it would introduce uh i was sort of going that same direction you know like in basketball like star players will just take a day off sometime um right like right that, that doesn't get to happen in the nfl unless your team's got a huge lead for the final two games of the season so uh, sure wouldn't you wouldn't you like to see that backup quarterback a couple of times a year just because i would and like having the coaches have to make like a calculated decision on when the strategy of when uh is which game a, tom brady gets off yeah that's a really interesting twist is is how that do you is. manage your players over a longer season so i definitely could yeah maybe you're selling me on it a little bit just because maybe. it shakes things up a bit it's a fresh thought okay whatever <clears throat> they're still arguing about it. it then we'll continue to over in the hockey league the nhl players begin their first strike in the 75 year history of the nhl did they get what they wanted i don't know i guess we'll find out um uh, in a couple months probably whenever i always pull for the players i hope so let's see oh my my man i didn't i didn't know this about him rocker billy idol fined two thousand dollars for hitting a woman seems like he got off kind of cheap it's just a woman. What, what year was this? Ninety two. It's just a woman. Who cares? That's what the. I guess that's what the powers that be determined. <laughs> to quote a Dave Chappelle uh, bit, what did she do? <laughs> <laughs> well, what right, did she the, say to him? The controversial point of view. Well, what did she say? What did she do? Um, oh, that, conversations to be had about that great stand-up sticks and stones on netflix watch it it's funny not for the easily offended but maybe at the same right. time it needs it's to... exactly what the easily offended need this it is what they need this is what and i'm not trying to turn every, anybody off of our of our program here but we got to be who we are and i just i think he's speaking to um maybe our generation and, and maybe one that's sort of like slightly older than us but not too much older where we're in this uh, the world can feel like a really weird place to us sometime when you when you think of all the easily offended and uh over dramatic things that are going on out there at times so to sure. hear to hear somebody say line. yeah like these are things thoughts that i have but would be very hesitant to say out loud dave Chappelle just throwing them out there was interesting I love it i have oh my yeah we can go on and on about this and i do think it's generational and fitting for this uh <laughs> for this podcast so fair enough we'll yeah. Continue, yeah we'll continue a little bit yeah it's gen we we come from a generation of Andrew Dice Clay and those guys where whatever he was he was comedy for the sake of being offensive right just right shock comedy that that sort of thing maybe he's not even the best example but kind of a get over it your feelings don't matter and people are gonna are gonna hurt your feelings on purpose and and you got to be able to get say over say things it, you yeah. don't like and you've got to be able to get over it or at the very least ignore it at the very least, ignore it when there's somebody somewhere saying something that you don't like. You, It's not your right to have an opinion on it if you're not interested in the first place, for the most part. So, yeah, his his whole program is worth, worth a listen. And I say all that to say, a lot of the things that he talked about, particularly uh, the part about i'm not even going to, going to go into this let's, let's cut that out i was going to go into the whole uh the whole pro-life conversation that our bit that he told and the joke being ultimately uh do you give away punchline should we give away a punchline I th uh yes if if you don't want to hear any punchlines just fast forward like <laughs> one minute and, and you'll be fine yeah spoiler alert. yeah feel free to yeah feel free to edit <clears throat> if need be but he's talking about uh woman's right to choose and hey it's their body their choice he agrees 110 percent uh, whatever i'm not entirely that guy but okay their their body their choice i can ride with that if they have the right to kill the little baby then a guy has the right to neglect the little baby and i've had that uh, that argument that conversation several times in public I'm totally okay with having those dumb arguments with people. That's all that I'm saying. You said maybe you wouldn't say it, but it was good to have 
to hear someone standing on a position that I've stood on by myself in a room full of politically correct people. It was great to have him affirming that I'm not alone, even though I knew that to be true. I knew I wasn't by myself. And even the people that were trying to be polite and polite conversation, I knew that not all of them totally agreed with that PC thing. If I'm watch Dave Chappelle sticks and stones. Yeah. Watch it. If I'm being honest, I, it was sort of like, light bulb for me when he said that and you know not that not that i feel that way personally either way but i'm like well it is an inarguably valid point of view right like without a doubt like you cannot if you're going to insist on one then then how can you have one without the other yeah why doesn't the guy have any choice at all like nope i made this decision and it was your fault for sleeping with me what? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> By no means, if it's yours, it's yours. But I don't believe that at all, for the record. I right, right. I... Father, yeah, fathers have a role and a say, in my opinion. Oh, I, yeah. How great that say is, is debatable, but an opinion worth acknowledgement and respect. Right, yeah. If, if, it's, yeah, right if something is that logical, it's really hard to refute. Uh, I, yep. I also feel like, you know, he did a good job of, of explaining the point that I think our, our generation can get a little frustrated with at times to where if you're a person who has a strange situation, you should not get so offended for being called out on your strange situation. Like we need to just face the facts that some, <laughs> some, <laughs> some lifestyles are more complicated than others and, and right not everything is about being catered to but this is an interesting it's definitely worth a, a watch for the really for anyone uh, you know the language is this typical dave Chappelle rough but if you can get past it uh i could listen to i could listen to dave Chappelle do an eight hour show you know he's just he's just so great at talking no doubt agreed I agree, uh, and that's our modern day conversation. There you go. Our 90s podcast. That, that, that's our one per week, right? That's our that's our tangent okay. of the week. Um, and nice. Back to April 2nd, the mafia boss John Gotti found guilty of five murders. Teflon. He wasn't that Teflon. <laughs> um, loan sharking, illegal gambling, destruction. Just, just the book. Throw the book at him. That's the, uh, the figure of speech to suit this. Uh, sure I always I always slide with not always that's not true but I slide with the mobsters off, oftentimes a lot of respect for Mr. Gotti the Teflon Don because one he's got a cool name and I love mob uh, let's see Camden Field opens and the Orioles beat the Mets on April 3rd. Game one of the Mayor Challenge. The Yankees beat the Mets at Yankee Stadium. Um, jury deliberations begin on the Noriega case that we touched on last month. We'll keep our eye on that. Search and Destroy closes at Circle in Square Theater, New York after 46 performances. They they do keep up with a lot of uh, like the Broadway and off-Broadway stuff here as well. All right. Any idea what Search and Destroy is? Not at all. As I was reading the fact, I'm like, I shouldn't have read this one. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I am... Uh, I used to say that I was not a fan of musicals, and I have mm. come to find out I was wrong about that. I just... Okay. What's your musical of choice? I don't have a musical of choice, but so I which, uh, okay, what you got? I got nothing. Um, I've got a, but I just I just noticed that the more like musical type things I've watched, and I'm I'm still not one for like plays and stuff. Not out of dis, oh, okay. not out of dislike, just out of no exposure. Like I just haven't, I haven't made myself get into it. I'm sure I would love it, but you haven't listened to. Hamilton yet? Hamilton has been like at the top of my list of, of you know, if I was going to do something musical, that would be... Do it. Yeah. But I want to see it. Do it. I don't want to just listen to no, it. No, bro, is... trust me. Trust me. Yeah. Like, you, you can't afford it. Shut up. I mean, not that you can't afford <laughs> no, it. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. That's an insane lie. I, um, no, I, well, you're, but... no, you're absolutely right. Um, well, 
what I'm, when I like said I wanted to see it, I, what I want to see, I want to say I want to see it. I want to see it on like my television. I didn't mean I want to go to see it. I knew I couldn't handle oh. it. Uh, yeah, congrats, yeah, congrats, or not congratulations. <clears throat> good luck finding a recording of it. They got it under right? a tight lock, huh? But I can listen to it on Spotify, right? You can listen to the entire album on Spotify, and it may not do the play justice. That may very well be the case. That just listening to the. Uh, to the songs in the form of a play because you know you just listen to it in order right. and it's it's a story right it's it's a story that you that you ride through but again probably not the full experience that the play is but oh my god so worthwhile so worthwhile yeah so watch it it's you, a good story it's, you've got a good writing told me to listen to it for like two years now almost and i just don't at least i at am the, at, you know what at the very the next time, because uh, I get a lot of, uh, of, of time in, in what I do throughout the week to just throw the headphones on and listen to stuff. So I will make that the priority now. Do it while you're cutting grass and right. and doing things that don't require your ear's attention or really don't require much focus. And even if they do, it's it's worth it. It's a good story. Well written. Shout out to Lynn manuel What's his name? Whatever the guy's name is, Min Min Will something. I should know, but I don't. <laughs> Hamilton's awesome. Um, I've been watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah. So however many years late I am on that, and he there's a season where he is doing the show, the producers. He's going to do the Broadway show or the a theatrical version of the producers. I want to say it's like straight up Broadway. So I'm kind of interested in that one, but I like musicals. I like plays and I like straight up musicals. You like Mary Poppins and those things. And if you like Disney mo movies, like you like musicals, just a matter of opening your eyes to what they are. Right. And then you realize, oh, I really do love musicals. Everyone does. <laughs> Uh, all right, sorry, what else, what else you got? All right, I got the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. Stanford beats Western Kentucky. Um, Cardinal guard Molly Goodenboer. Um, was the MOP? What is that? Is it the most something player? MOP? Yeah, not Most a... outstanding player. Ah, okay. Most outstanding player. Uh, that was so Lee Trevino wins his second Champions Tour by one stroke from Jack Nicholas in the golf tournament. I'm sure he did that uh, sword swing thing. That was him, right? <laughs> that would do like the... I don't know. Was that Wasn't like that a him? celebration thing? Yeah, he would do like a... Like, not jousting, that's not the right term. Fencing? Whatever. Like a fencing, fencing. thing? There you yeah. go. He'd like a fencing thing. Yeah, uh, let's see. Peruvian President Alberto Fujimori suspends the Constitution and, and dissolves Congress. That's an interesting, interesting. story. Uh, he suspends the Constitution. Like, yeah, hey, this Constitution sucks. I'm not using it. <laughs> uh, so we have disproven the wrestling crowd in Toronto. Which, so I'm really curious what that event was now because... WrestleMania 8 actually took place on April 5th at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh, uh, it was probably some janky WCW or NWO. NWO wasn't around yet. WCW was barely staying afloat. Uh, yeah, you know, like, so, well, not NWO, NWA. Wasn't it like National Something Wrestling? Oh, yeah. Before? So, yeah. So, NWA was just now um, set into the conversion to WCW at this point. Like they were, and they were doing okay, but they were no, they weren't, they WWF. weren't going to, yeah, they weren't going to draw 62,000 crowd. Um, Hulk Hogan still drawing for the WWF defeats Sid Vicious. Sure. Um, and in the main event, Randy Savage beats Ric Flair for the WWF heavyweight title. That was a big deal. Yep. Uh, it was a big deal that Hulk Hogan wasn't in the, world championship match uh, let's see it was macho man versus or he was wrestling sid vicious which sid sid vicious was that uh oh it was, uh, he was technically sid justice in, in this gotcha. incarnation okay, cool. cool let's see so oh yeah this was the title that rick flair won at the royal rumble 
uh, a few months earlier. Man, he didn't hold on to it very long. Randy Savage right. already beat. I was thinking that. Yeah, so uh, Serbian troops began besieging Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia, which will become the longest siege in modern warfare. In Serbia? Sure. Uh, let's see. Sure, there's a lot of history there. That's That's a pretty big deal. After I just spoke ill of them, I think a month or two ago, maybe last month, in the 54th NCAA Men's Basketball Championship, Duke beats Michigan. So Michigan made it. Uh, was is... this during their... Um... You webbing them? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so back-to-back -back titles for Duke Blue Devils. That's probably the Christian Leitner one. Christian Leitner or Grant Hill to Christian Leitner. Right. One of those would be in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. This, this is, yeah, this is definitely about that time frame because I don't think Grant Hill was, um, an established NBA player at this point. So that timeline makes sense. Microsoft announces windows 3.1 upgrading from 3.0. Uh, U.S. Supreme Court rules a Nebraska farmer was entrapped by postal agents into buying. Oh, I should I should really proofread these into buy, buy some drugs. No, he bought some mail order child pornography. I'm about to say he bought some ugh. drugs would have been way better. Uh, drugs would have been way better. Hope he's being mail order molested right now. Big deal on April 6th. Voting begins on choice of Elvis postage stamps. Oh, sucky. I kind of remember that. After 151 years, Britain's Punch Magazine publishes its final issue. Never heard of Punch Who Magazine. <laughs> oh, oh, we talked about this last month. Florida drops the rape charges against New York Mets, Good and Boston and Coleman. Oh, uh, oh good. John Major, not Mayor, elected Prime Minister of the UK after Conservative Party wins. Record 18 golfers in the 60s Masters round one. 18 total? All right. Uh, yep. And this just uh, blew up like a mofo. Well, this was quick. The NHL strike ends after 10 days on April 10th. Mm. Like, hey, yeah, you guys are on strike. Nobody's watching you. Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> That's not. I wonder right. that that either went that way. They were, they were like, you know, we can find more hockey players, and the, or <laughs> and get the same ratings. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's such a, that's such a southern point of view, but it is it is very regional, <clears throat> super regional. We're so far away from hockey land, so I'll say who cares, and it's people not people around here right that's why we need someone else for situations like that we need a northern well, we need a yankee invite a northerner on for a hockey special hey we were just talking crap about hockey you mind defending your sport will you please educate us as to the strike of 92 the great strike of 92 that 10 day period uh the second they... second lowest nba game score ever uh at this point anyway oh. Detroit Pistons and New York Knicks, 72 to 61. Wow. That is pretty low for a professional basketball game. Sure. I mean, it could be worse. <laughs> I was thinking my guess was going to be lower than that. That's not low in NCAA, but that is reasonably low for the NBA. Yeah. Fred Couples wins his only major title on April 12th at the Masters. I've watched him. I've watched highlights of that a couple of times. It becomes a big deal from time to time. Yeah, I know the name so well that I would have expected uh, he would have had more wins. So, April 12th, Euro Disney opens in France. Uh, that was a thing. Yeah. I've never been to regular Disney. Neither have I. We need, we need Cass on to. To talk Disney that too. He's the master. Goes yearly. I think he has a uh, a cottage there. I think he's just <laughs> a resident. 
Living that good life. Yeah. That Disney life. I'm just hating. I wish I could go with him. Uh, longest two undefeated baseball teams to meet. Oh, it's really not that big of a deal. The Yankees 5-0 and versus the Blue Jays 6-0. and That's just the sign of... Lame. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to me when you're in double digits. At least. Court throws out Apple's lawsuit against Microsoft. I don't know what it was about, but it's probably interesting. No, we made something and they made it better and more easily accessible. Jay Leno's final appearance as permanent guest host of tonight. I guess this is before he gets named uh, official host. Permanent guest. I was a host. Leno guy. I, I liked him. I f um, in, in all the fallout that came, I followed Dave Letterman over to to CBS and was a Letterman guy. I did not, and it was purely network based. We've talked about this before. Yep. Yep. CBS is the old people network, right? And I just wasn't interested. I wasn't a late night guy anyway. So Dave didn't hadn't established my fandom for me to follow him. So I just kind of stuck around and Leno was the guy who was on. But but Dave is better in hindsight. Dave is better. I, I won't argue with that. Yeah, there's not much argument to be had. <clears throat> I'm a big Letterman fan. Um... William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, and DeForest Kelly inducted to National Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Wow, this all the way back in 92. And Wait, what? National Broadcast Association Associations Hall of Fame? I've never... Is that what you just said? That is National Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Why TV show actors? It, that seems weird to me. I think when I hear that title, I think <clears throat> news people. Right, same here, same here. I thought it was interesting as well. There we go. Uh, let's see. Shout out to the OGs. You remember the sitcom Perfect Strangers? Of course I do. Balky Bartakamus. Ba yeah, Balky Bartakamus. April 19th. Cousin Larry. <laughs> Balky and Mary Ann get married on Perfect Strangers. I don't remember that. As much as I love the show, I don't remember him ever having a long-term girlfriend. So Yeah, they had two cute girlfriends. They both had, like, cute girlfriends who were... Not that they were some weird, out-of-shape, goofy guy married to a model or anything. But they had, like, two girls who seemed a bit out of their league, which is the par for the course for television, right? Right. They gotta... But aren't all of our women out of our league, really? Like, when you look at us as sweaty, disgusting... Right. I feel like we always... Speak before we think men <laughs> and we, we... they're women, which is oftentimes better. Uh, what's the term? Um, um, out, out hitting the coverage or something like that. <laughs> uh, we often somehow manage... The 100th episode of American sitcom Murphy Brown airs. I watched a little Murphy. I think that was a CBS yeah. one, so you might not have seen it. I do too. <laughs> I, but Murphy so Brown was okay. So that was like the, the one show. I'm not going to say the one show. I'm sure there were a few other shows. But I, yeah, I watched a couple of episodes of Murphy, Murphy Brown. All-star concert in memory of Freddie Mercury held on April 20th in London. I think I remember this. Mm -hmm. MTV Did you watch made that movie? Uh, no, I still haven't watched. Uh, oh, what was even the name of that movie? Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I haven't either. I I will at some point. I don't. Know, maybe. Maybe. I, I really, you know what? If I'm being honest, I I really like Queen. I'm okay. More hesitant that the movie m may make me not like them or something. You know, some. Oh yeah. I'm just, and and I don't imagine that's the case but you know something i don't it's that whole you know that thing we talk about all the time never meet your heroes or whatever where it, the the less you know about celebrities you like the better sometimes so sure yeah i definitely don't dislike queen by any means i like their songs okay i don't dislike their songs but yeah hot take the songs to me because they're not my number one style of music but they're so uber popular 
the songs are kind of generic sounding to me. It's like, oh, we will, we will rock you and those things. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. They, those songs have a place in my heart. Bohemian Rhapsody is a beautiful song, actually. And a couple of other, you know, they have some catchy songs, but they're just kind of a, it's almost elevator music to me. I think it's, but, I think you appreciate them more. Like we, you know, when Bohemian Rhapsody became popular, um, it was because it was brought back, uh, during the nineties, which actually this, uh, spoiler alert, we're going to talk about that later, but, um, I think you have to look at queen versus the actual time frame that their music was coming out. And then you may appreciate them a little more that they were a little more, uh, quality sure. and innovative compared to whatever else was on the charts that time. So no go. <clears throat> I'm I'm interested. Madonna signs a sixty million dollar deal with Time Warner. That's a big. That's a lot of money. Even in I mean, in ninety two, that's a lot of money. So, yeah, shout out to the Queen. We were talking about, we were her before, talking about her. Yeah, before we hit yeah. record. Yeah, I love her still. Still, still one of the queens of pop, if not the. Right? If not the. Who would you put above her? That's I'm trying to think of that as I say it, and yeah, Janet is the closest that I can give you. Maybe Brittany, maybe Brittany. Brittany was who came to my mind, um, but I think if we were to look at overall legacy and chart hits, what we yeah. what we know from our lengthy experience with the early '90s is that Janet Jackson is hard to beat. Um, yeah. but if anybody may have it, it, Madonna may have given her a run. So, yeah, I think it's Madonna. I think it's Madonna. Brittany, definitely the modern though. Is she, you know who it, not really, you know, I'm going to put above Brittany. Who's that? Modern day. Yeah. Uh, what's her face? Like number one number one white girl in the business doing her thing she writes amazing songs and they're catchy taylor swift oh. taylor swift is a bad chick i like taylor Man, swift you're girl. right i am I'm, yeah that little chick is something serious i'm on team team tay tay yeah <laughs> fair enough i'm on team tay tay too she writes some good music yeah i was actually thinking about her just a few weeks ago i made a comment about her where i was like taylor swift is um uh, you know, she's Low just key awesome like, she, yeah exactly <laughs> like let's just be real for a minute she's pretty awesome she has done a lot and manages yeah. to stay at the top of her game i know nothing about her other than i hear her songs her songs are unavoidable and i have like a teenage daughter i have a 19 year old daughter so it was kind of right at the perfect time where she's listened to taylor swift for a long time so i caught her music you know, secondhand, and she never fell. I haven't, I've never heard a bad song. I've just, I've never heard a bad song, and I've heard several really right. good songs. Yeah. Um, all right. April 23rd, Miriam Barry, former mayor of Washington, oh, D.C., doing too much, let out of prison. Doesn't he, uh, get reelected somehow after this? I think so bro and yeah. of course in washington dc if that's not like just a there there's weight to that being a thing he's like that, on camera doing cocaine or something like that i'm with a vague, prostitute right and uh how do i even know this i feel like i've heard this recently or something because <laughs> um, he was the freaking mayor of right our, our country's capital but the best most hilarious part of the story is that I'm pretty sure he somehow gets reelected after this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I feel very confident that that's true. Very, very confident that that's true. Just, only in America. Only, right. Just ridiculous. You say that, but that's not true because you do. You did that too, didn't you, Toronto? <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> They've got their own Mary and Barry. Only in North America. <sighs> I'm we say that but i'm sh whatever i I'm, bet that's not true. right i'm sure there's the a bunch of europe has its insert, share of nonsense yeah well, let's insert some random european royalty jokes here and how long we follow those inbreeding ones. to all of our not we 
all of our Not European we... fans, leave us some a comment on the closest Marion. They know Mary. what it is. Yeah, they know what it is. We're, these people who are supposed to be our leaders, they're creeps and weirdos. Right, right. That's generally consistent throughout uh, a large majority of the countries. Yeah, it takes a special mofo to feel like you feel like they should run other people for good and bad. It takes a special kind of a person. So you're going to get some weirdness or some bad behavior. Speaking of a country that runs all the other people, China gets its first McDonald's on April 23rd. The very first McDonald's opens in China. Congratulations. Yep. The... I've been on a bit of a McDonald's kick lately. And by like a McDonald's kick, I mean I've had McDonald's about once every two or three months for the past year and that's kind of that's a lot compared to the past 15 years where i've just really avoided them all together i'm like oh okay every now go grab one of those combos that's two cheeseburgers or something like that right live a little here and there yeah french fries i'm like oh i need some mcdonald's french fries and a mcdonald's chocolate shake so whatever congratulations china Welcome to obesity. Right. On April 24th, George Steinbrenner drops his suit against baseball. I love this, the title of this event. He, he sued baseball. Why? Because they wouldn't let the, Owner Yankees, of the Yankees have the Yankee network, maybe? What was it? What? Why did he sue baseball? I, it probably had to... I, you know, I really don't know. I, um, How long has the Yes Network been a thing? <clears throat> I want to know. I was trying what to. What love is. I just wanted to know really quick about that. Um, man, George Steinbrenner was involved with too many lawsuits for me to to quickly find out what the heck was going oh, on. Oh, such as the life of a New York multi-millionaire slash billionaire. In that case, moving on. Oh man, so growing, uh, yep. growing pains. Final episode on ABC on April twenty sixth, nineteen ninety two. Ah, okay. Um, Alan was it? Alan Seaver was the dad, I think. Okay. He was uh, he was my television dad. Was he? Yeah. Okay. Growing pains. That's Kurt Cameron. Kurt Cameron and. Uh, uh Kurt Cameron and Alan Thick. Uh, this this the two I, thought, I remember. Alan Thick. That's yeah. right. Okay. Mike uh, Mike Seaver. It was Kurt Cameron's character. There you go. I don't know. I, I was more of a family ties guy. I loved family ties as well. Mm -hmm. Uh man, the days. Days. Oh man, every this is okay, it's a rough it's a sad month. Alright, so April twenty sixth. Who's the boss final episode after eight years on ABC TV? Um, guys, you got to offset your finales a little been, bit. Oh my God. Has there been a cuter girl than Melissa Milano, Milano for as long as she was cute on relevant pop culture television? I guess, um, what's her, what's, I don't, ah, uh, Kelly Kapowski. What's her real name? But she started um, a little older, but she was always... So you get, yeah, you get Kelly Kapowski, but... She was a different kind of... She was yeah. sort of always, always the hot girl, even when she switched up to, what was it, 90210, Tiffany Amber Thiessen. That's her name. So, But Alyssa Kelly, Milano had her, had her own special charms going on. She was a pretty girl, too. Yeah, I see. you see what you did there, right? But you, So you get her in Who's the Boss, and then you get her in Charmed. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, she had 10 plus years, potentially upwards of 20 years of, damn, Alyssa Milano's like that, for real, for real. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fair, fair, fair. That's a, that's a tough uh, argument to overcome. Alex Haley wins 92 Ellis Island Award for posthumously. 
writer Alex Haley. Ozzy Smith steals his 500th base on April 26th. Okay. NFL Draft, University of Washington defensive end Steve Emptman from first pick by the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> Good job, Colts. Good job, Colts. I don't remember him Never at all. Never heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a big. Well, whatever cheers to him he got his money and um, he got his money because he worked hard in college Betty Bru- Betty Boothroyd becomes the first woman elected to speaker of the British House of Commons in its 700 year history breaking That's the glass ceiling Betty good Never job uh, let's see music <laughs> awards the 20th let's let's clarify 27th annual academy of country music awards Gar- okay garth brooks and reba mcintyre win garth brooks could do no wrong back Red in 92 i legit was trying to pull this pistachio out of a shell and say the the phrase I don't know who's up for anything but my money <laughs> garth brooks won, garth right? brooks and reba mcintyre <laughs> oh wow yeah that was it. This was their time. I also had Randy Travis in there, which I was going to omit. But if I'm being honest, let me shout out Randy also. But right on. Go, Garth. Uh, switching gears. Um, on April 29th, a jury acquits the L.A. police officers of beating Rodney King and the riots begin. Let the games begin. Let the games begin. Uh, I still remember the the video of those just people in the streets and burning cars and all the terrible stuff going on. That guy getting pulled out of the truck and getting his head busted open. That's the one that stands out in my mind. The guy at an intersection getting pulled out of his truck and getting hit over the head with like a bottle or something. Going, um, you know, I haven't really thought about this specific incident in some time so like looking at it through my you know current current day self it all makes more sense now than it did then you know we were we were still pretty young when this was april 92 like the riot part makes i'm not saying i that i agree with riots ever you know because they're just terrible and a lot of innocent people get hurt but um it makes more sense now than it did then. Yeah. Yeah. Cameras got them. Yeah. Cameras get it. Yeah. You can't beat people. That's not a thing. You should not police. do that to police. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, April 29th, voting ends on the choice of Elvis stamps. I wonder what Elvis stamp won. We'll never. Well, maybe we'll know. Um, ah, but here, I've got a picture in my head. I bet we both do. And, and, we're, we're going to be a degree of correct no matter what, you know? Sure. Um, ah, and on April 30th, I'm telling you, 92 was the death of, of 80s television, I guess. So 208th and final episode of The Cosby Show on NBC TV. Mm. So all the television, not all the television dads. Yeah, like, uh, well, okay. I'm, I think Family Ties is already done by this point. So yeah, I would imagine so. My, Family ties is gone. Different strokes is gone. Those things are gone. My four dads, what, Tony Danza. What and, television dad is left? Um, what? That's a good question. Al Bundy. <laughs> he's not a good television dad, though. Yes, he was. He's a realistic television dad, but he, you know, he's not teaching you life lessons like, like Bill and uh, and so, Alan and. Oh, what's the yeah. guy from Family Ties? I know exactly what he looks like, but I can't remember his name. Can't remember his real so, or fictional name. So there was Michael J. Fox's name was Michael P. Keaton. Yep. So, so the dad's name was Mr. Uh, Alex P. Keaton. Someone, Alex was the was Michael J. Fox's character, right? <sighs> yeah. The dad's name is Dad. Who knows? Yeah, Mr. Keaton. Daddy Keaton. Mr. Keaton. <laughs> Well, that is our events of 1992. Let's take a look at the video games of 1992. All right, kicking it off with what is hot in the arcades, and we have Sunset Riders. 
I loved Sunset Riders. This game was so fun, bro. It was, yeah, it was one of, yeah, one of my all-time favorite arcade shooters. With, yeah, four players. I would be that, uh, the Mexican guy. <laughs> this is the one that I like to be, if I remember correctly. I, I liked the, um, I think it's made by the same people that did Turtles Konami. So, you know, you're, you're, yeah, you can even tell by the insert coins up top, you know, same, same kind mm -hmm. of deal. But the fact that you had your gun could fire in different directions and the, uh, mm -hmm. just the different tiers and stuff. I don't remember yeah, being that great at it, but I, I did really enjoy it in the arcades. Yeah, this game was fun. It was super fun. From Microprose. This was, this was allegedly, all right. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know if I believe Rumor you. Rumor is. I don't know if I believe you, Game Pro. Like, I think this was paid by the people that made bots um, to tell us that it was hot at the arcades at this time. I've never seen this before in my life. I can't honestly say if I did or didn't, but I can tell you I never played it. Or if I did, it was once. You're walking around in a mech, which is kind of cool. That seems super duper slow, though. But it's 1992. Let's give it, nah, let's, let's let's give it that. That is really I'm slow, isn't it? I'm with you. But <laughs> Graphically, pretty impressive for 92. I could... I would, if I ever saw this game, I would have given it some quarters just based on In how some cool ways, it, it was kind of a FPS though. Yeah, a really slow FPS. And it, in some sections, apparently, I don't know if this is just demo mode or whatever. You're probably just seeing what you did after the game where you walk right. around with your mech. Heading over to consoles. I, this was a new release in April of 92, and I had to put this one on here because... I played, I think, this one mm -hmm. at your house. Um, on the PC. On the PC, right. Yeah. So it would have been a, probably a better version of it than this NES port. My, my heart is fluttering right now. <laughs> that music, bro, I'm dying inside right now. I've been this game. That's wild. Absence makes the heart go yonder. For sure, I need this in my life. I've been thinking about this game. Oh my god, that music is just sticking out in my head like crazy. Okay, yeah, shout out to King's Quest. I do love the... the 8-bit foreboding music. <laughs> they did a decent job. No, that won't do. I got stuck so early in this game. Yeah, me too. My memory of it is that it... And I could be completely wrong, but my memory of it is that it looked better on PC. Yeah. But sometimes you remember, like, your memory of video games is that they look great because they looked great at the time. And then you go back and you're like, oh, maybe I, I can't believe it looks like this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure there wasn't much difference between Tech Mobile and Madden. What we have in Madden right now. Not much. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, what's next? What's next is a game by an often um, <laughs> overlooked company, Taxon. But how would we not include G.I. Joe in the list? Um, really seems a little late to the game uh, in 92 for a G.I. Joe game, but uh, such is. Um, NES games. Although I am yeah. see seeing my childhood heroes with Duke and Snake Eyes, and uh, I don't really don't remember Gridiron. Is he wearing a football helmet? That would make sense with that name, wouldn't it? Yep, I remember the game for sure. I didn't play it much in the same way that I remember the cartoon, but I didn't watch it. You can tell the people that made Castlevania made this game. Like, sure, absolutely, absolutely borrowing the assets. This is probably just like. Uh, let's just, alright, we got Castlevania, we'll just throw some soldiers in it, call it G.I. Joe, uh, bada bing, bada boom, making money, you know. Is Castlevania a shooter like that? At times, you know, it's definitely a side-scroller, and you, it, you know, you have a whip, but you also can, like, uh, get new items, and you would have, like, uh, projectiles that would come from certain things. Sure. Yeah, I played this one, though. 
Not much. No, I didn't. I just played a game like this. Right, because probably you probably played a game by Konami that, uh, you know, they probably just had their little cookie cutter game engine where they're like, we're just cranking them out. We, we've, sure. we've got the magic template. Now, right. I, I know you've played this next one, though. Hey. Wait, what is this? This is... Is this the Power Pad game? No. This is Bulls versus Lakers. Oh my god. <laughs> That's Bulls versus Lakers. Awesome, bro. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. This is another one where my memory of the graphics is similar, but slightly better than what I'm seeing on the screen here. I love how Horace, yeah. Horace Grant had the giant goggles. Let's go, Jordan. What are you gonna do with it? I feel, I feel like this game. I don't know. I could be entirely wrong, but it held up pretty well. Like it, it was still this be, look, still be fun today. It doesn't look horrible, horrible. Right. I mean, is it? Yeah. Is it two K twenty? No, but uh, no. Nope. Was it super it awesome at the time? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Not many things better. Not many things better. Like only having to deal with, I say only having to deal with five players, but basketball games are just fun like that. I think basketball translates well to, uh, to video games. It's ultimately just like an intricate game of Pong. It's a big month for basketball games as EA was uh double dipping was yeah they, they just let's take is everything. this the same going game just with one-on-one -on -one? yeah i feel like this is gonna be the same game with just one-on-one -on -one. oh no different perspective that's what it is and so they to translate this into 2k idea the first one is the default view on 2k that broadcast view and then this switches to the 2k view and this is the setting that i play 2k on is this camera angle but i'm with you same game different camera angle the dribbling looks kind of terrible but otherwise i don't know maybe that was just this is feels like it accurately represents uh us playing basketball outside one-on-one <laughs> you, know, you back, feel like this was maybe back to a... the opponent right what are the what are the odds that this was supposed to be Magic versus Bird. And then Jordan just got so hot that they switched it up. Nope. And then HIV just happened. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense, actually. I mean, because, yeah, who cares about what Bird versus Jordan? What? <laughs> what is that? Because that wasn't really a thing, was it? Uh, that so much really as Magic versus Bird. So much as Magic versus Bird or Jordan versus Isaiah, maybe. Here's one that I loved. Um, I don't know if you ever played it. I know you were. A, Let it be Coach. It's not Coach K. You were a Genesis uh, kid, and uh, this was a Super Nintendo game. But I played. I was talking to talking to a buddy earlier today about that very. When the Genesis came out, they took me away. They stole me away away from Nintendo. I do not remember this. I've never cared about college basketball. It the closest I ever it, got was Coach K with, and that was playing it with Cass. Like, oh, I got a basketball. I'm like, okay, I'll play basketball, but you sure you don't want to play an NBA game? Nope, you're playing Coach <laughs> K. All right. Well, if it's just you know us versus us, this basketball is basketball, I suppose. But right, a lot cooler if I can be Michael Jordan. <laughs> right. <laughs> But this game had no crowd. It was weird, but it had like the graphics are like significantly. I guess the three D kind of thing going on is uh is very somewhat innovative. better. Yeah, innovative for the time. And Shaquille O'Neal is in the game. Uh, I remember that. So okay, I always just played. Yeah, the him. physics of this game is interesting.
Moving over to Sega Genesis, by the way, big release of uh, the month for the Genesis is Kid Chameleon, which I never played. And here's a little gameplay of it. Actually, it looks pretty good. Of course, we were just looking at G.I. Joe on NES, so this was bound to look pretty good comparatively. Yeah, I'm going to say that games looking better was part of the reason for me switching the Sega, which I did. Because this does look really cool. Yeah. But it, I mean, it may not be that big of a deal. I may be overselling the Sega. Um, I mean, but this looks pretty fun. Modern day, I'm a huge Sega fan. Um, you know, retroactively, I suppose. But this does look pretty fun. Kid Chameleon. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's kind of cool. This was also apparently a big deal at the time. Ernest Evans on the Genesis. Never heard of him. So he is like some... He's using a whip to beat up mechanical worms and bugs. His body is really weird. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening here? He kind of looks cool when he's standing still, but then he moves, and I'm like, is he a robot? What is... Yeah, you're freaking Gumby. What's wrong with you, bro? It looks, uh... Speaking Not of, good? Speaking of Castlevania knockoffs, it's sort of in the neighborhood as well. Man, he must... He's gotta be a robot. It's interesting, right? But, nah, I'm good with... I don't feel like I missed anything. Here we have a game called Devilish, which uh, looks like a... Oh, it's Breakout. Except not. No, I guarantee you I never would have been allowed to play this. Because the, the name, name of it is yeah. Devilish? What? Yeah. yeah. You met my mama. Yep. She ain't with that. Nope. <laughs> also, this month saw the release of... This bad boy. Shout out to Nintendo. Another sign of their innovation. Nintendo has good ideas, and I love them for it. I like it. I, I, what I respect about them is sometimes they have bad ideas, but they they just try. But they anyway. try. Yeah. Guess who don't try? PlayStation. But y'all gonna keep on giving them the, your money, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am. <sighs> System and scope sold separately. Now you're playing with power. Super power. Out of this world what was uh, this? It was a big deal for having such a theatrical presentation. It wasn't. It believes as, in itself. Yeah, it wasn't as action packed. I mean, they even got the Star Wars. Oh my god! god. Let's let's get into it. Check out these <laughs> check out these 1992 super graphics, and you'll understand what the big deal was. Oh, they knew they were making a work of art, bro. They had no doubt about it. We are making something epic. Show me another game. And truthfully, that looks kind of cool. Movement like, like that. Like, the time. Yeah. This was like an interactive movie. Um, I remember renting... That's clever. Like, all that's clever. Yeah. Let's show the elevator going down with this little light. I remember renting it and being terrible at it like being upset that i wasted a rental on it because i i think it was one of those games where you really needed an instruction manual to tell you what in the world you were expected to do but yeah graphically uh was really impressive for the time um ah this this was like the most memorable scene in it uh, this early in the game all right i'm on a planet check out this monster it's gonna eat me i gotta run away but you got to jump over the leeches. It looks like it wouldn't have played well. That was my thought. Of, like, that's my memory of it is that it required really precise controls, but the controls were terrible. But it didn't have precise controls. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a hard time believing that this was fun. People love it. I think the we're... concept behind it, like the the effort that was put behind it, and the level of artistry behind it, is admirable. 
what I think is our lone Turbo Graphics game of the month because Turbo Graphics is it never had a lot of success here anyway, and it's on the decline now. And I don't really even know what we're looking at. The name of the game is Ballistics. Uh, that looks like a whole lot. No, this is a, this is a lot. <laughs> this is a whole lot. What is even going on here? There's. <laughs> no idea what's going on. Moving on. Oh, here we go. Which one is this? I want to see if it's one that I remember. Oh, the music's really good for a Game Boy game. I've... I feel like we got some good. Double Dragon stuff ahead of us. Oh, I'm sure. Hmm. Nope. Since when that does doesn't look bad. That man's got a frisbee gun. He's laying down the law. But hey, keep it in mind that it's a Game Boy game. It's pretty right. solid. Yeah. I just never knew Batman to just shoot his enemies dead. But okay. He's got some decent speed to it. It looks fun. He's got... And that is That's... our. This concludes our games of April 1992. This is Good. definitely a we made a game. Can we use <laughs> Batman, please? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you're totally right. Because they were going to throw some military guy into this game and they're like, oh, wait. Do you think we could get the Batman license for this? Right. Right on. Okay, yeah. Gaming in April 1992. Right. Love you for that. Love you for that uh, King's Quest, bro, for real. Oh, I was excited to see that it. That was good to my heart. Moving on to the movies of 1992. Walt Disney Pictures. What is this? I tell the city how to sing. That, what is this? This actor, this guy. Yeah, he's somebody. Uh, and young Batman. And young Batman. What? That's the Newsies. That's the name of it, right? Yes. Good call. It's a musical. Yeah, I didn't know that. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of a of famous musicals. musical. Yeah. yeah. Or not? <laughs> Is it like a Broadway thing? Is Newsies a thing? You think maybe it was originally on uh, Broadway, like Les yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Like which one came first? I feel like it made it at some point. If we don't act together, then we none. Is that great young acting? I mean, he would go on to be Batman, so. What's it gonna be? Nothing. He's your vote for best Batman? Yes, he is my vote. My unapologetic vote for best Batman. Now, I will throw in the, the acceptance that it was just, those are what I consider the best Batman movies. So maybe somebody else could have done a great job too. So he fell into a good script with it, but he he did an amazing job. Fair enough. I'll even, obviously I, have never seen Val Kilmer. <laughs> so Val Kilmer's the best Batman. You know I have seen Val Kilmer. Uh, I think we saw it in the theater I'm together way back. <laughs> yeah, he is definitely not my favorite Batman. This creeper right here. That Joker is super duper Mr. Creep face. He isn't he though? And he's playing like uh I, I think he's gonna be some kind of ladies man in this movie. He never ever in life is that guy. He was perfect for Green Goblin because all they had to do was just throw some green paint on him. Yeah, if he yeah. That's he, super creep face. What's it? Who is this? Is this Willem Dafoe? Is that his name? That's his name, yep. 
my gosh, I don't. I'm not trying to be a jerk about somebody's. What was she in? What's she famous from? There's uh, Judge Reinhold and a young Samuel Jackson. Young Sam Jackson. What is that chick's name? What was she in? I think she was like in a movie with Billy Crystal, maybe. I'm still, I don't want to get a good look at her. I think, she, was that her in Forget Paris? Yeah, Willem Dafoe's super creep. Boondock Saints, though. Mickey Roy. That name sounds familiar. Like, I kind of remember that, but 13 year old me. I feel like we should more regularly qualify. We were 13 when this stuff was coming out. Right, we, when some of these. More... So few Fs given about <laughs> some white sands. Right, like, yeah. We would have taken a look at this trailer and been like, nope. There's no uh -oh. action. American Tale and Land Before Time, done by the same person, same group. Oh, Chanticleer. I don't remember the live action aspect of this. Nor do I. Hmm. He becomes a little raggedy cat. What? It's kind of a dark uh all the all the children's movies could be a little darker back then sure i don't i'm would almost guarantee that i have seen this but i have zero memory of it with elvis <laughs> presley chicken the king they even call him the king. Oh, okay. This is just pure Elvis ripoff, I guess. Stop those birds. I don't know. It's, I don't know. What was that rooster's name? In, in this movie? Yeah. So his name is not Rockadoodle? <laughs> I thought it was Chanticleer when, like when it first came on. Chanticleer. <laughs> Stop. Hasta la vista, baby. Young Larry Fishburne and John, Jeff Goldblum. Oh, yeah. That's Goldblum. That's deep cover, right? Yeah, you called this last month. You said it was coming out this year. You were a little, yeah. couple months earlier than uh, predicted, but here it is. I had, I was thinking weird in my head. I had Deep Cover and King of New York mixed up in my head. I'm like, uh, that doesn't look like the right movie. Larry looks weird, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's Deep Cover. Oh, so Morpheus is undercover. I don't remember it. I just remember the, the, uh, the song. Welcome to the world, Snoop Dogg. Right. One eight seven on an undercover cop. That one guy looks like uh, when uh, one of the characters from Key and Peele, where Key's dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing as an American anymore. No blacks, no whites, no nothing. It's just rich people and poor people. 
Let's go. Okay. Yeah, for the unknowing, that was uh, the soundtrack to Deep Cover was our introduction to Snoop Dogg. That was a very big moment in my life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Still love that uh, Deep Cover with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. What is this? So this didn't see as much of a theatrical, like usually I, I, I gauge it by the amount of theaters they release in, right? So this one was a little more limited, but it does star one Patrick Swayze and he won an award for it. So I just thought it was uh, worth throwing in. Mm. One of the movie Whatever. I would have never watched this in 92 too. I'm like, oh, this looks so boring. Yeah. Maybe it's good, but I'm. I feel like it was more. Watch Patrick Swayze do a movie with an mm. all-brown cast. Ah. Give him an award. This is art. This is art. Isn't Patrick Swayze so artistic? He managed to hang around a bunch of brown people for a really long time. <laughs> Acting at its best. <laughs> They were poor. Did we mention that they were poor? And he was nice to them. Oh, uh, we watched this already, right? Wait, yeah, we watched this during our uh, our test stream earlier this week. Oh, never, I'm sorry. Spoiler. <laughs> uh, well, like, behind the, behind the curtain. It ain't over the fences. That's where I hit him. <laughs> you play inside ball. Hit him where they ain't. Well, they ain't over the fences, so that's where I hit him. I used to do it. Like, truthfully, I feel like in 92, I hadn't decided that I was a Yankees fan yet. I just didn't have a baseball team. And there came a point where I was kind of forced to pick a team and having zero opinions whatsoever. It's like, uh, Yankees, I guess, because that's the team I've heard of, for real, <laughs> and have any kind of an opinion of. Well, you know, television... Part of that was due to this movie. Probably so. Television-wise around here, you, you, for some reason, in Alabama, you had access to the Chicago Cubs with WGN. So, Everybody on the East Coast. Yep. Yeah, so Everybody on the eastern side of the Mississippi. Me being a, I think. the contrarian that I am, I could not be an Atlanta Braves fan with TBS. So sure. I had to be a Cubs fan. I have a lot of friends like that. You are not alone in this area. Man. You are incorrigible. You are washed up. What is you a home run? Does that make you feel better, Johnny? I love John Goodman though. Hey, John Goodman is great and he's still great. He had a he's just had a good career. Yeah. See the Connors is back on the air now? Uh minus <laughs> minus Roseanne. That is interesting, isn't it? It is. I'm not gonna give away the spoiler, but I actually because I don't think I'll ever watch it. I looked up well, what did they do with her character? and interesting i'll just say that okay I would, for, I would be curious for to people know of our generation yeah you you have an opinion about zan show you've watched it before can i can i admit that i'm in the minority that thinks roseanne is terrible and i know okay. and i never enjoyed one moment of it <laughs> i did not oh, like okay. it I, still won't I, don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't have any I don't really have any feelings on Roseanne Barr as a person because I don't follow her enough to know I'm, she said some things sure. that made people mad um, I don't even know what they were so I'll just reserve any judgment but I'm just saying the, oh, show, it, on the show itself I did not care for so she said some things that I feel were within the bounds of her job as a comedian. She didn't say anything out of bounds for her okay. job, in my opinion. She made a joke about a look. She made a look like joke. This person looks like this kind of a joke. And it wasn't, it wasn't absurd. It didn't take a big stretch of the imagination to see where she came from with that joke, but it, 
it's very easy for people to add a racist connotation to it okay. and that's what happened like it's very obvious that when she made the joke she she should have saw the seen the potential outcome all that said roseanne is polarizing right right love her some people love her some people hate her i'm gonna go with everybody loves the woman who's on the screen right now how do you not love valley pardon mm, i love her i love her so we watched this one earlier this week as well just uh, kind of doing some testing for the so we're watching the trailer for the movie straight talk shout out to dolly and i'm sure just another movie where she's super charming absolutely so, entranced you when we watched this earlier in the week I, bro, uh, you, you bro, I was lost mesmerized. all communication with me when Dolly <laughs> came on the, screen. the very next day i went on a spotify binge session listening to dolly parton and tonight i put elena to sleep listening to dolly parton i love her I thought oh. she wears wigs. Those are wigs that she's wearing. Really? Which seems obvious, but I had the same ex that same reaction. Really? That's absurd. Then it's like, oh, it's not absurd. Absurd. That's some pretty big hair. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, nowadays you see a, a girl with big hair is commonplace. I'm like, oh, it's extensions. You know, like. Yep. And yep, then you still don't think of anything about it. But like, in '92, I just I would have never. It just didn't occur to me. It didn't register. She is super big on being physically attractive to the world. Like go always being present, air quotes, presentable, which means being made up. That's a big thing for her, which is, I'm not trying to judge at any, by any means. I just said how much I did, but it's a bit of a character flaw in my opinion that i can look past i go okay you the one thing that i have against you is like you've got to have a ton of makeup on at all times and you have to have your wig on in order in order for you to leave the house okay whatever it's just part of uh some people's um makeup for no pun intended sure but whatever dolly parton's awesome straight <clears throat> talk's awesome that song straight talk is also fun i've listened to it three times <laughs> So this movie is, I will tell you why it's included. It's interesting, right? I think we're, we're, we're within the top five, maybe even the top, let's say we're in the top five of this month, as far as the movie was released this month. And as far as what it grossed at the box office versus all the other releases this month. Right? So this movie I found interesting because it did not meet the typical criteria of me putting it on the list because it only released in like some 400 theaters yet managed to gross more than the movies you've seen before it like I, these are in order of of uh, how well did they do so um, with huh. less than half theaters it still made a ton of money never heard of it but it does feature well I think I saw Burt Reynolds there's Tim Tim Robbins um, this is called The Player. It's that Whoopi Goldberg. And that's Whoopi. What is that? That sounds familiar. She's pretty. What does she play in? Is that Cher? That's Cher. Uh, and then, uh, and somebody. But that chick, she was also in she's Forget very, Paris. Yeah, she was in something familiar. Something with Billy Crystal. Okay, whatever. I'm sure that's good. Sounds familiar. Speaking of Batman. Speaking of your favorite Batman. Oh, that is not my favorite Batman. No, yeah, I've had you it's on my record as saying. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I defended him so because I'm just like a little Batman fanboy. I defended him so much when that movie came out. He killed what the is franchise. This? I remember this. What is this? Was he the final yes. Batman of the '90s, 
Or was that George Clooney? I can't remember which one came first. I don't remember. I think it was Kilmer and then Clooney. And Clooney couldn't dig him out of the hole. But Yeah, I think that's right. They were like, oh, okay, here's Kilmer. But Kilmer got a bad movie also. If I was going to say, they both, had, got like, really they both suffered from incredibly terrible scripts. What is the name of this movie? The name of this movie is Thunderheart. There you go. Okay. Probably also critically acclaimed Val Kilmer. Right. He's hanging out with Native Americans. You guys <laughs> loved it in Dances with Wolves. We're Watch it with a younger guy. We're tackling the issues. <laughs> you all have a little bit of Indian and you go back to your language. Now, thanks to, uh, what's that website where you find your DNA? Ancestry and 23andMe. Now, thanks to Ancestry.com, we find out that you do not have a lot you of Native American in you. any Native American oh, in you, that's you been freaking the, liar. That's been really funny for me, too, uh, because everyone's like, I'm one-eighth Cherokee. Oh, yeah? I bet you're not. It's Fern Gully. There we go. Is it the same? St Wait, oh, that you're so right. That's super funny, too. I have multiple. So what we're looking for here is from the studio that brought you American Tell and the land before. This feels so artistically like Land Before Time to me. Maybe I'm way off base. <laughs> it's gone quick, doesn't it? Are you really a human? I'm Zach. I'm Krista. This weird creature is a human. Don't you think you're a little old? He's not that weird. It's a creature. Tom Luke. Don't have tails. They have big, big bottoms that they wear with bad shorts. Now, is that Robin Williams? Which one's Robin Williams? The, the dragonfly, whatever, the bat. I call him a dragonfly. It is, isn't it? I can see it's a miracle. That sounded like him. <laughs> Accidentally released an evil force inside of the <laughs> machine. <laughs> Texas. If you would have said to me, uh, I don't know how I'm trying to say this, but if you would have said Tone Loke is in an animated film, I could have never, uh, I would have believed you, but I would have never been able to name it for you. Right, me neither. A lot of people love this movie i've never seen it yeah the hippie in me has it in a special place in my heart what is this we are at the number two movie of april Guy that does the voice for every movie of the 90s in trailers. Right. He's new in town and the girls love him. Something about the. Oh, I guess it's just been remastered. That's why I'm like, man, the visual quality of this movie is blowing away the other movies. <laughs> so remade it for Blu rays. I've never seen this. It's Stephen King. Right. This main guy, maybe it's just he's got that pretty boy look, but he looks familiar. Is he a vampire? Mm, is he a vampire or a werewolf? <clears throat> he killed one of my men.
With sleepwalkers? It's a vampire, right? The cats hate him. Do cats hate vampires? I've never heard that one. The cats really hate him. That's what I'm gathering from the trailer. Yeah. He's a rat boy. <laughs> Not a vampire at all. He's a rat boy. All right, so that was the number two movie? Yep, number one movie. Um, big Beethoven. Yeah. I just remember they're going to give him a bath and he's going to get the whole house wet or whatever. I don't think I disliked Beethoven. I can't believe it was the number one movie. I guess I kind of can, you know, family movie and all, but. What was Beethoven about? Was it good? I don't even know why he's named, but he looks like, is that Cujo? Did Cujo get a second job? This, this shot right here is exactly why I don't want this dog. Right. Or this uh, movie. That's uh, what, oh my god, bro. I'm good, yeah. This dad, I don't even know who, I don't know, I couldn't tell you anything about him, but I feel like he just always played the dad in movies that, where the dad was just frustrated with life. <laughs> <laughs> that was, he was just typecast. Oh no, the shenanigans every, I get anxiety watching movies like this. Do you really? Yeah. You and Amy are similar in that way. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't enjoy the comedy of it because I'm just too busy just being upset about everything that's going on. Right. How much shtick can we just reuse over and over with this dog? We can't control yeah. him and he gets everything dirty. I'm not a big fan of animal movies like that. <laughs> Like that type of a joke, I'm sure that that probably landed when I was a teenager. Maybe because I got decent memories of Beethoven. Like I don't think I didn't dislike Beethoven, but I know I couldn't watch it like as a grown man. Okay, whatever. Beethoven, number one movie. Okay, yeah, I, I always like to pose this question: If you're going to see a film in April of 1992, what would you see? And, uh, what did we get? We got Fern Gully. Yeah. And uh, Bay, our Babe Ruth movie. I would, uh, gosh, I don't know. I think it would have been between, it's, I don't know. I'm trying to keep, uh, current day. Oh, uh, deep Daniel cover, I guess. But not really, because I didn't watch that well, then. I didn't watch it in the movies. I probably wanted to, but I didn't. Right. We wouldn't have been able to in the theater without parental supervision, which wouldn't have happened. And, uh... I didn't see Fern Gully for years later. I saw Rockadoodle, and I saw Beethoven. I probably, I probably would have got drugged to Beethoven, and, but maybe Babe. Would have, the Babe Ruth movie would have been... Yeah. Because I want to say straight talk, but I bet young me would have not wanted when to go would, see some romantic nah. comedy with Dolly Parton at the time. Stupid young me. What did I know? Yeah, I, uh, Dolly Parton was nothing but boot jokes for me at the time. Right. Oh, I'm, I'm, and like music that was okay. Speaking of music, it's time to check out the music of 1982. But before we do, actually, I'm filling in for cast this week. I went ahead, and so here's how I'm doing it. I've got two sneak peaks of movies from the theater next month i'm going to read you these terrible reviews and tell me if you can guess what they are um all right fire okay let's see this is from what is this i gotta make sure i know what okay yep all right 
Here's this one. Let me say, this is a 90s comedy through and through. If you first watched it then, it's probably a timeless classic. If you watch it for the first time now, you will probably wonder what was wrong with people in the 90s. Don't try to make logical sense of any aspect of the plot, story arc, character development, etc. Has a pretty funny song in it, to be fair. Um, I feel like I'm going to give it away with this next one. So just chime in if you figure it out. I'm not Catholic, and I think I can understand how this can be offensive. I don't really like the actress, especially nowadays. Uh, back then, she was okay to tolerate, kind of annoying. I mostly appreciated the discipline the characters show and the sweet heartwarming attitudes they all have. It, oh, okay, Sister Act. Oh, you got it. You got it. Okay. I felt like that one was going to be too too giveaway. Yeah, I'm like, okay, well, he said I'd give it away. That's a giveaway. Something with Catholicism? I should have just left that out then. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh, there's, but I, I will read you my final review of the movie. Um, this is one star review. This is the entire review verbatim. Okay. She, she is annoying as an actress and a person. <laughs> <laughs> And I just, I just thought that one was good. Well, I disagree. I always liked Whoopi. I don't have any opinion on modern day Whoopi. I really don't. Uh, is she still on the she's, view? I don't even know. I uh, think she's. I think she has established her anchor of the view. Oh. Where she's. Yeah, I think she's like the leader. When the show first came out, it was like Barbara Walters or something like that. Right. And I guess. She probably just got too old. It wasn't like Whoopi took over her show. But I think she just got old. And Whoopi is, first and foremost, a comedian. So she can handle the down bits in the conversation. And then she's like a real person. So whatever. I like Whoopi. I disagree with her sometimes. I usually agree with her. She's entertaining at the very least. I think she's great. But whatever. And Sister Act is awesome. So poop on anyone who gives it a one star. All right, let's let's check out the music of 1992 to close out the show. Um, again, this is going to go ascending in the order that they were on the charts. I mentioned uh, this is only thrown in this one here um, because I referenced it last week. Richard Marks Hazard. I was like, the video is like Twin Peaks murder mystery. So I just I was going to throw in a few seconds of it. Nope, don't remember this at all. Black and white. What is it? He's being accused of murdering this girl or something. Okay. And uh, I don't know. Things just things are weird. Pretty weird for Hashtag a four minute video. Artistry. Yep. Hey. Nirvana really after te after uh, Teen Spirit came along they could do no wrong for a while yeah I've heard a couple of uh, reports on when that song came out and the wave that was its circulation across the country and it, it's pretty cool the way all th that all worked out but yeah Come As You Are is a better song. Awesome, right? Yeah. A better song. <laughs> yeah. It's a better song, absolutely. What is this? That has my uh, attention. Oh. Yeah, this I like guy. this. I mean, is that who this is? Yep. Yeah, they were actually really good. Isn't it funny, like, like it, if a guy dressed like this approaches a girl in, in modern times, she is running away. It depends on the confidence that he has. That's true. That's true. 
And I bet the level of confidence this guy has is going to make it happen. Off the charts. That Joker has all the freaking powder on his face. He got his eyebrows waxed. He's feeling good. Here's a guy teaching us the uh, the secret magic that is giving a girl a back massage. Hey, it's in, hey, it's in the tool belt, my boy. Uh, tool <laughs> belt. Uh, I learned mine from Austin Powers. I, I've given out my fair share of sensual massages. Hey, another classic. Yeah, I, I went from liking it to hating it because it got so overplayed. And I guess nowadays I can probably give it a break and listen to it again. I, I'm always up and down on Red Hot Chili Peppers. I'm like, yeah, me too. Nah, nah. But then they, then they did, um, they did the two. There was these two Japanese. Um, movies I watched and they used Red Hot Chili Peppers in the uh, closing credits and I'm like man it lines up with this movie I just watched so well it was uh, they did live action movies of Death Note if you've ever heard of the anime yeah that were really good um, not the one on Netflix is not good but uh, okay. but the actual Japanese ones are really good I just want to clarify that for anyone who's like it i saw the live action death note it was not good no you need to watch the japanese ones they're great right <clears throat> yeah they're worthy of respect like i said not really my faves but yeah i respect them i yeah same same respect them not not likely to buy an album i will actually guarantee you that i won't but uh respect hot take i put them above you too like in my do i like them oh list? that I don't know where I'm at with that. I may be with you. Yeah, I'm not a big U2 fan, but I think U2 is a significantly more popular group, and I'm good without either one of them, but I'll take the Chili Peppers over them. Shifting gears. <laughs> ah, oh my God. Exploring uh, the world of, of 3D graphics, uh, pioneers in the industry, Def Leppard, uh, for... I feel like this is the kind of video that would have got nominated for an award for something. Not that, you know, I'm not saying it's good. I'm not making any opinion on it. I'm just saying. Oh my gosh, they have a 3D kid running around. But then the more I look into it. Uh, All right, moving on. Yeah. I'm a Def Leppard fan, but... Me too. I don't think I was then. What is this? Here, now this is interesting, okay. You're probably familiar with the KLF, right? But... I don't remember them. Okay, um, I remember them. But how about this? This is... The, the song is called Justified and Ancient. Featuring Tammy Wynette of country fame right and uh maybe i can find this you know i'm on the record country and r&b soul are cousins even as recently as our is a uh, little nas x making it work with this collaboration oh yeah what is Lil Nas X? You know, Old Town Road. Have you heard of Old Town Road, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Billy Ray Cyrus. Is Billy Ray Cyrus in that song? Yeah, they, well, I mean, how, how how much of a Wikipedia do you want on Lil Nas X? I actually like him quite a bit. I think he's a really talented, creative uh, young guy. Yeah, uh, but I yeah. feel like you can give it to me in a Cliff Notes version. Cliff Note version, he made a pretty cool song called Old Town Road. Um, it caught on you know he's you know basically i i don't want to diminish him in any way but basically a youtube rapper you know that that, okay. that made it right um song caught on and and somewhere along the way you know be it through managers producers i don't know the whole story but they they're like let's make a longer version of this and get billy ray in on it uh and is that right yeah and okay. hey you know uh I'm usually I, I usually have a lot of pushback from popular music, but I just I can't help it. I like it. It is a pretty cool little. It's a catchy song. Yeah. 
I remember this. What is this? This is CC Peniston. CC. Okay. Yeah, I, I, of course I remember this. The remnants of uh, the '80s, late '80s, still coming through. Yeah. My mom had a band around this time, and they sounded a lot like that. <laughs> Fair enough. Many, many. She'd have like uh, probably did rehearsals at the house and whatever. We had good times. The music is, you know, undeniably fun. So yeah, how could you have a bad time? Yeah, she had like keyboards and these huge. Do you remember that? Like back in the day, yeah. we had those big speakers and stuff in the house. Yeah, yeah, that was from her band. What is this? Oh, speaking of speaking of YouTube, YouTube? yeah. yeah. This, I, eh, it's, it's so uh, easy to say this is my favorite U2 song, because why wouldn't it be? Uh, I have no idea what this is. What's, this is where, like, this is you one. need cast to bounce this off of, because uh, okay. I got zero opinion. This is definitely one of the, I, I think if you were to Spotify them, there's a fair enough chance this will be at the top of the list. What's the name of it? One. Okay, I know that song. I mean, I... No of I've it. heard it. Yeah. Yeah. I would have never been able to say that's a U2 song. Tell me if you remember this one. Oh, of course I do. That quick, huh? Yeah. Live and learn. <laughs> you named the band. You got to live and learn. I remembered the song, but I wouldn't have been able to name the band for you. I don't have it. Joe Public is their name. Okay. Yeah, this was, yeah. uh, I, I really like this song, um, and it's, but it also is sort of like, how do I say this? It's, hip hop is about to take a turn where it just doesn't get to be this fun very often. That's right. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> I do. I love that he's just walking down the street with his electric bass guitar. Like, that doesn't work. You're definitely going to remember this next one. Yeah, of course I do. Yeah. Oh, this of course. Is part, of our, I love part of our classic debate on who's your favorite in vogue girl. Yeah, uh, Dawn for sure. I don't know. Final answer. I don't know their names anymore. Um, like I don't know who's who anymore. Mine's the third one on the right when they're in the silver dresses. Third from the left. Sure. What a weird video. Like it's a combination of great and weird. Yeah. Like the guy in the suit. I'm gonna go as far as to say Yeah, they're on the end, far right. I'm I'm gonna say they just weren't good visually oftentimes. And it's not that they're unattractive women by any means. But their music sounded great, but I was just like never really interested in watching their music videos or seeing them on things. I had such a crush on uh she changes position uh in her in her layout too much, but Oh, the one this uh in this little clip at the front for uh Don't Let Go here that, that this about to pop up. Yeah. Right. That's the one. I, I would watch any video just for that. And speaking of, like this is the time where um, I guess it was on the in the theater, uh, not too you know within the last couple months or coming soon or whatever. But Wayne's World brings this back, you know. Sure. This Bohemian Rhapsody. <clears throat> <laughs> I 
Yeah. All right, we're I think we're up to our top three of the month. Let's go. It's totally crossed out. I remember wearing my uh, my clothes backwards to school one day uh, in in eighth grade, and sure. no one. I, I went to a very small uh, Christian school in junior high, and no one knew what in the world I was doing. To another bad low fad, I'm the Mac and I'm bad, giving you something that you never had. I'm making jump jump. Ah, uh, yeah, they were cool to me. Knocking. <laughs> They jump the entire Someone video, to run, but they can't. Cause I'm the make it, make it, make it, make it. <laughs> so which one of them died? One of them died. Yeah, one of them died recently. Well, what a perfect next song to accompany oh, that bad news. Lord, I'm so done with this song. A, a month later, it's still number two mm. on the charts. You weakly depress me with this song. Well, it's not. I'm. I just report the facts, and it's number two in God April of '92. Me. He's got to be standing next to a window, crying his eyes out. Yeah, and then when you All know what the gun. song's really about, like, man, I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to perform it all the time. This is from a movie, the soundtrack with uh, what's that girl's name? Not Jodie Foster, Bridget something. Whatever. All right, and uh, hey, we'll take one more look at the gorgeous Vanessa Good Williams. Lord, man, what? How are these songs all still at number one and two and three? This saves the best for last. Number one song in April of '92. I think it was number two last month. So it overtook Tears in Heaven, but not by much, right? So, yeah, or, you know, they're still hovering. She's another one of those embarrassingly pretty people. Right. Where I've gotten significantly better after 40 years of life, but I'm going to say as much as 20 years ago. I would have never been able to like really have a conversation. Not really. I think I could say that I would not be able to have a conversation. Yeah. Fair enough. You know, I, like fair enough. Truth be told. Yeah, ma yeah ma'am. You are far too pretty for me to look you directly in the eye. <laughs> right. I don't think I'm just going to leave. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to be around you. Well, yeah, I'm not trying to shoot my shot or anything. I just want <laughs> friend, but I'm I'm giggling and not being myself. I right, gotta go. right. Anything I say <laughs> is going to be humiliating. I've got to leave. And that's a wrap. Yeah. That's a wrap for the music, the movies, the games, the trivia of '92. We went long this episode. Um, yeah, we did. So thanks for sticking with us if you did, and uh, we'll trim down those movie trailers a little bit next time around. But good show nonetheless. Um, yeah. So good stuff. Yeah, looking forward to what is it? April. We're uh, so we're moving into May, getting near those summer months where all the stuff is going to come out and uh, continue to follow the news. Thank you, Wesley. Uh, great, yeah, great times, and we will see you guys for May of nineteen ninety two. Peace.